6.5 is exploring graphs of reciprocal trigonometric functions. So what I've done here is I've drawn sine, cos, and tan graphs, and we're going to look at how do we find the reciprocals of these. Now this should be a little review for you because you've already covered reciprocal functions. So it's a good idea for you to think of all those little things you learned about a reciprocal. So remember, reciprocal just means one over. So when we're doing the reciprocal, the sine function, we're actually doing cosecant theta. Remember, don't forget to change the letters. S goes to C. Cosecant theta is one over sine theta. Okay, so if I do one over a number, now remember when we did reciprocals, where we had a height of one, one over one was still one. So that means that every point where we have a one or a negative one, one over those are still going to be the points on my reciprocal function. Now the other thing you probably remember is that when you have a zero, we can't do one over zero. So that would give you an asymptote. So everywhere where you have a zero, you're now going to have an asymptote like this. Now what else do you remember about reciprocal functions? So we know we want to find the places where the function is plus or minus one because those points are still going to be on the graph. Um, so those, it's kind of hard to see the purple on, that, on those dots, isn't it? I thought it would be nice and colorful. Okay, so I put in all my zeros and make them all asymptotes because the function is undefined there. Easy enough to do. Everywhere we have one, we still have it on our graph. Oh, I should have put one more here. It's probably faster just doing it by hand. Okay, there we go. We've got all our asymptotes on. We've got all our, our, our um, invariant points, we used to call them, right? Now, you also remember that with reciprocal functions, if you're in the positive zone, it's still going to be positive. Because one over a positive number, still a positive number. But... If you recall, it said that if the function was increasing, then the reciprocal would be decreasing. Okay, the easiest way to remember that is if I said, what's, um, what's 1 over 2? You'd say a half. What's 1 over 8? An eighth. You see how those numbers got bigger? 2, 8, go to a half and an eighth. So that means that as this a reciprocal function as this increases, the reciprocal function is going to decrease and vice versa. So from here to here, the function is increasing. Remember, you're reading from left to right, it's going up. So that means on this side, it has to be coming down like this. Oops, paper bent on me. And if it's decreasing on this interval, then it has to be increasing on the reciprocal. So there's all you have to do, and you're going to do that four times here. Okay, so we had our zero, we have our asymptotes, function is decreasing, that means on this side it has to be increasing. Notice it's still negative. This is still negative here, but it's increasing, so on this side it has to be decreasing. So that is all you have to do for your cosecant function. Just find the asymptotes, find your invariant points, the one ones, and there you go. Wasn't that easy? And it's so pretty in purple. I'm going to switch to a different color to see if I can get a little more, a little more difference here. Okay, so let's do the cos theta. So the reciprocal of cos theta, of course, is secant theta. Secant theta is 1 over cos theta. So a reciprocal function, yes. And we're going to put in all our asymptotes. So now the asymptotes are going to be pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2, it's hard for me to see in this light, hopefully not for you, and negative pi over 2, put that on, and negative 3 pi over 2. Okay, the invariant points where we have 1s, 1s, they're still on the graph, 1, 1, negative 1, positive 1. Okay, let's start right in the middle here. So this was increasing, so that means this has to be decreasing. It's just making like U's over top of them and intersecting at these points here where it's 1. So there's that one. This one's going to go like this. Do, do, do. This one's going to go like this. 
So we're only doing between minus 2 pi and pi. And there you go. Well, that wasn't hard. So let's just look at these again just um, because they're so similar. So we have vertical asymptotes at the point where sine theta or cos theta was 0. So we put in our asymptotes. It still has the same period, the same period because one complete cycle would be between here and here. So we have one up and one down. Okay, so the period is still uh, 2 pi. The domain, well, we have to change the domain and range, don't we? Well, not the range. Well, yeah, we do the domain and range for each of these, but the domain here is still going to be x is an, or theta is an element of real numbers, but theta is not going to, it can't be equal to n times pi. So 0 times pi, 1 pi, 2 pi. So let's write that out here somewhere. Domain equals theta is an element of real numbers such that theta is not equal to n times pi and n is an element of integers. Okay, that's a big I. So in other words, you have to use 1, 2, 3, 4, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, right? Integers. Okay, and the range, the range for this function, it's going to be um, y is greater than 1 and y is less than 1. And you can sum that up nicely by just saying that the range is y such that the absolute value of y is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, that, that covers it nicely for you, doesn't it? And you should say y is an element of real numbers. There you go. So domain and range, and the same thing for the cosine function. We had we put in the vertical asymptotes where we had 0, same period of 2 pi. And the domain here is a little different because we're not on, like we're at the um, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So we have to adjust the domain a little bit. Or can I write that? Let's put it in here. So the domain is going to be theta. You can say theta is an element of real numbers such that theta is not equal to, and there's a little calculation, it just says 2n minus 1 times pi over 2 and is an element of integers. Now I'm not sure if your teacher would ask you to describe that. I never asked my students for it, but it doesn't mean your teacher won't. And the range is going to be the very same as a sine function because we're just looking at the absolute value. I would say it like this. Y is an element of real numbers such that the absolute value of Y is greater than or equal to one. Okay, so we've covered the domain and range of those two. Now let's do the, the tangent function because it's so pretty. Look at all these lovely, uh, I don't know what you call them, snaky things. Okay, so the same process as we did before. We have to find the zeros, and we're going to make the zeros asymptotes. So here we go. We put one here. Everywhere where we have a zero on our function is going to become an asymptote for our reciprocal, and the reciprocal of tan, func tan theta is cotan theta. Okay, so we get all our dotted lines, all our asymptotes in here. Do we get them all? Bing, bing, this one, this one. Okay, so there's all your asymptotes. Now, where we had it increasing, it has to be decreasing. Where's the invariant points? Remember we had invariant points? And remember the invariant point for tan theta, let's look in this zone here. So one, the height of one happens to be at pi over four, right? Remember 45 degrees? So we had like 1, 1, square root 2. Remember that little calculation? So the tan of 45, or pi over 4, is 1 over 1, which is these ones here. So here's all my 1s. I put them on so that you would see them. So these are going to be invariant points. So they're still going to be points on the graph of the, co of the cotangent function. So this was... Um, 
let me get my pencil. So y equals tan theta was in pencil, and y equals cotangent theta is going to be in pink. Okay, so now the same thing we learned with reciprocal functions. If the function is increasing, it's going to be decreasing on the other um, on the other side. Right, so we're going to be coming down here like this. We don't have we don't have all of the graph on this one, but it is still coming down like this. This would be this is no longer an asymptote, this is a zero. So it's going through here. It's going down like that. Okay, so let's let's sketch that one again here. So we had our invariant point here, an invariant point here. This asymptote of the tangent function is now a zero. Okay, this is now a zero for cotangent theta. So every every asymptote of the, the gray lines here are now going to be zeros. Or better, easier to write those on right away. Okay, so this was increasing, now it's decreasing on this interval. Note we don't change above and below the axis. If you have a positive number and you do one over it, it's still a positive number. So this one's coming down as well like this. It's going to go through here. It's going to pass through that minus one and one and down it goes. And look how beautiful this is going to be when you're done. You'll want to frame it. Meow. And the last one here. What was increasing is now decreasing and asymptote becomes a zero and invariant point stays right where it was. There, isn't that gorgeous? That's your tangent function. So the vertical asymptotes at the point where tan theta was zero and the zeros where the tan theta had the asymptotes, it still has the same period from here to here, which is pi. And the domain is, let's write up the domain for you. The rest of that's pretty easy. I'm sure you've got that figured out. Theta is an element of real numbers. Theta is not equal to n times pi, and n is an element of integers, okay? So we're just saying that um, everywhere where we have an asymptote now, so 0 pi, pi, 2 pi. So it's kind of like the one we did with um, cosi. Okay, and so we've got the domain and the range. Well, the range goes everywhere, doesn't it? Y is an element of real numbers. And that's all you have to really know for your reciprocal trigonometric functions. I hope you found it as beautiful as I think it looks. And um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, support the channel by subscribing. Would be really nice of you. Bye.